Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Sunday. This is our Palm Sunday, or for some people, the Passion Sunday. I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The people of Jerusalem said this, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, wherever you are this morning, you are surrounded by the love of God. And together we form a community that come to praise, to sing, and to lift up the name of the Lord, our Christ. Join me in the call to worship that you have in your bulletin. Let the mind of Christ be our mind. Let the humility of Christ Humble us. Let the obedience of Christ teach us to obey. Let the service of Christ inspire our service. And let the humanity of Christ shape our humanity. And may the people of God say together, let the glory of Christ lead us to glory. Let us pray together. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week and gather in spirits from our homes to pray, some from Borden and others from Quebec City, Together, we ask you to turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Bring us at the last with him and all the faithful to your new Jerusalem, your kingdom of peace and justice for all. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our first hymn is uh, hymn 127 in Voices United, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
is Sunday. Friends, as we come to the Lord during this period of Lent, some of us have come with uh, hearts broken, sadness. Some of us come with guilt for things that we may have not done or things that we come short of doing. But the Lord is good to us because every time we bring those shortcomings to Him, the Lord is always ready to forgive. So friend, I just want to invite you at this moment to join me into the prayer of confession. Together, let us pray. Lord Jesus, one of us betrayed you. Another denied you. And all of us have forsaken you. Yet, you remain faithful to us unto death even death on a cross. Strengthen us so we do not turn aside but follow you to the very end for the final victory belong to you. Let us take this moment to have a silent reflection about the week about this uh, period of Lent before we enter Holy Week. And here is the good news. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet the sinners, Christ died for us. So with confidence, I say to you, in God's great mercy, receive forgiveness from your sin. Amen. Today is also a time for us to reaffirm what we believe as Christians. As we enter Jerusalem, we believe and we have some core values that are depicted in the Apostle Creed. In this moment of trouble, we need to stay firm in our faith. So join me into the Apostle Creed. And together and boldly, let us say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin, the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The scriptures written for today, the first one is uh, taken from uh, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 
50 verses 4 to 9. Isaiah wrote to the people of Israel, The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, and that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame or spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confronted. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together, who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me, who will declare me guilty. Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning, the responsive psalm, if you can follow, is from Voices United. We find it on page 758. 758. The psalmist wrote, In you, O God, I have taken refuge. Let me never put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong wall to keep me safe. You are indeed my rock and fortress. Lead me and guide me for your own sake, for your own name's sake. Release me from the net that they hid from me, for you are my protector. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O God of truth. I ha have mercy on me, God, for I am in trouble. My eyes are wasted with grief, my soul and my body also. My life is worn out with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails me in my misery. My bones are wasted away. I am the scorn of my enemies, yes, even my neighbors. My acquaintances shudder at the sight of me. When they see me in the streets, they shrink away. I have passed out of mine like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. I hear the whispering of many. Fear is on every side. While they conspire against me and plot to take my life. Our epistle reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. 
uh, Philippians chapter 2 the Philippians chapter 2 verse two, verse 5 to 11 Paul wrote this to the Philippians And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We start from five, chapter 5. He said, Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who thought he was in the form of God, did not count equally with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in a human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confers that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God. Thanks be to God. And uh, our gospel is taken from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 27, verses 11 to 54. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jew, the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now, at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd one prisoner whom he, they wanted, and they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Beside, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people 
to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that they was gaining nothing, he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hand before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this, of this man's blood. See to it yourself. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the government took Jesus into the praetorium and they gathered the whole battalion before him and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him and placing a crown of, th of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jew. And they spat upon, upon him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own cloth on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of, skull, of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingle with God. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watching over, him, over there. And over his head, they put the, the charge against him, which you read. This is Jesus, the king of the, of the Jew. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, waging their heads and saying, You who will destroy the temple, and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribe and elders mock him saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and he will be, we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desired him. For he said, I am the son of God. 
and the robbers who were crucified with him also mocked him in the same way. Now from the six hours there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. About and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That's it. My God, my God, why has, have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this is this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out to the tomb from the tomb after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with all and said, truly, this was the Son of God, the Word of our God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God of hope, today we are welcome Jesus into Jerusalem waiting for him to show us the new Jerusalem. We have welcome our Messiah, our King. At this moment, I ask your spirit to be upon me, to be upon your people. To open my, ma my mind and my, my mouth to proclaim your word. Come, O oh Lord. Speak to us, your people are listening. Amen, amen. During this uh, period of COVID-19, all of us are wondering what's gonna happen to us, to our relatives, to our friends. Today, we come with those fears. But let me tell you something. Just one or two stories that uh, I encountered during this, uh, this week. On Monday, I decided to, uh, to call my, uh, my sister who lives in Strasbourg, in France. I haven't, haven't heard from her since the beginning of the, the outbreak of uh, COVID-19. So I was wondering. I tried all the phone numbers that uh, I have in my possession, but I couldn't reach her. So what I decided to do is that I asked uh, my son to write uh, on their uh, social network to 
her daughter. And in about a couple of seconds, she responded and gave me a new uh, phone that I, uh, I, I could call her on it. But when she sent a message, my son asked her, are you guys okay? And she responded, yes, we are okay so far, but dad had COVID-19 and he is in the hospital. Shocking news. So COVID-19 is not far away, but is close to my family who lives in France now. So I grabbed the phone and called my sister and I said to her, how are you doing? And I can hear in her voice a kind of sadness. I can hear that she's worried. And she said, for now, we are okay. For now, we are okay. I listened to those, those words and the first thing that came in my mind is Jesus going to Jerusalem. When people looking at Christ, shouting Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord, hoping to be saved. Save us, some may say. Save us. Oh Lord. But what kind of word can I say to my sister at those moments? Should I shout, Lord, save her and save her husband and her children? All I can do was to pray with her, to ask her to stay home and stay safe and save lives. My friends, at this moment, we are like somebody who may look at the gospel of today and say, why can I celebrate? What can I celebrate? The problem that we are facing and the world is facing now is so huge. But isn't that exactly what is happening here? When we see that in a moment, a crucial moment of the life of Jesus Christ, some of his friends didn't even want to follow him anymore. Some deny him. Some, for just a couple of uh, silver coins, betray him. Isn't that in the face of our friends and our family who are now suffering, who are sick? We see Christ. Are we going to make the choice to let them be alone? To let them cut off from the society? Are we going to be like those disciples who went in the garden of Gethsemane, went asleep when Jesus was praying? Or are we going to pick up the phone and call those people and give them hope? What during this moment we can celebrate friendship? We can celebrate unity. And this is a challenging moment that we have that we can come together not betraying one another. 
by spreading this virus, by doing what is right, by doing what saves life. You know, when you look at uh, the scripture, the story of Jesus going to Jerusalem facing the cross confront us with a choice. The first one is we can exercise our courage or we can run away in fear. When the cross is in front of us, we can say, I'm afraid. Or we can pick up the courage. I'll suggest to you that in this moment, I've seen people with courage, like our nurses, like our, daughter, our doctors, like the people who are helping neighbors. I was talking to my neighbor last time through my, uh, by, uh, you know, I was in my home and talking to her uh, uh, over the fence. And she was explaining to me that our neighbor, two dogs, who recently had an accident, cannot go shopping. So she took her courage to phone them and say, if you need something, I will be here. And since then, she went shopping for them and dropping it at the door. We have neighbors who cannot rake their yard because they are every people. We go and do the job for them as they wave to us or through their windows. My friend in Christ, during this moment, we are facing a difficult time of choice and the cross confronts us to that. We can be like Simon of Cyrene on the road to Golgotha who carried the cross for Jesus. We can carry the load for our elderly people, for those who are sick. We can do our part. Myself, I decided, knowing that some children will be sitting at home not knowing what to do, since I have some skill in physical fitness and soccer, I decided to do online fitness. To take that uh, time away from this kids so that they can be active. I have about uh, an average of 37, sometimes 47. I have a kid from Quebec. I have a kid who joined from Ontario. I have a kid who joined for Calgary. Over 50 people. My friend, you can pick up this cross on your own way. It may be simple to pick up the phone and check on those who are shut in. We are facing the choice of the cross. Be courageous and do our parts or run in fear and not helping others. At the moment, as I said to you last week, is being courageous also is to respect the law. Stay home. Stay safe. Save life. My friends, when you don't spread the disease, you save life. When you stay safe, you save life. When you stay home, you save life. You don't put yourself in danger. You don't put others in danger. 
Yes, I know for those who have kids, those who has a elderly parents, it's a time of struggle. But I hope, trusting the Lord, that there's a time for resurrection. My friends, while I was preparing for this message, I have a dear friend of mine who is in her late 80s. I haven't talked to her for a while, so I uh, Google her, her name and uh, find her phone. She never changed her phone for a while. I knew that she wouldn't change. So I call her up to find out how she's doing. I know she's, she's with her husband and they are you know, a little bit older. And then she was happy to hear my voice. We chat about five minutes. And in about 30 minutes, I received this email when she's saying, Elua, don't be so sad because things have changed my way. Since the last time we talked, I have been diagnosed with cancer. And the bad news is that the cancer is spreading. And now I have to do chemo for about a year. And hopefully, things will get better. I have done already three treatments and I'm doing fine. And what struck me in the email was this sentence. She said, do not worry. I am strong. My faith is holding me up. Don't worry. I am strong. My faith is holding me up. And my husband is here to help me. I didn't know what to respond to that email. So it took me a while. And I sent back to her, I said, I'm so glad that you have your husband close to you at this moment where your children and myself we are so far from you. But I'm more happy that your faith is strong. So two things, two things that this lady taught me during our conversation and in that email. First, she said, my faith is strong. You see, the thing here for me was this. She's not even only scared of the cancer, but the point is here also, she needs to go to hospital to have her treatment. And during that period, as I, I call her back, she is alone because nobody is allowed. So her, her, her husband cannot go with her for the chemo treatment anymore. But not only that, she's always afraid that when she goes to the hospital, she may pick up COVID-19. So her fear is double. Her fear is double. Fear of leaving the senior home and going to the hospital, sitting there alone and get probably this virus back. At her age, God only knows. But she said, my faith will get me through this. Isn't that amazing? Her faith will get her through that. That's the first thing that I learned. The second thing is the courage of her husband, Pat. So the family connection she said, Pat will be always there and he's there to help me. My 
my friends, if you are thinking that we are going through trouble at this moment, think about my friend. We can do something. We can hold tight to our faith at this moment. And as a family, we can do our job. As a citizen, we can do our job. May the Lord help us. May the Lord be with us so that our choices may be choices of courage, not of fear. Because I believe these two shall pass. Amen. This uh, morning, I would like to share with you a prayer that our moderator put online, and uh, uh, I think he asked us to share it with all our congregants as much as possible. So this will constitute my pastoral prayer this morning. This is from our moderator, moderator Box. Richard Bott, who put this on our United Church website. Let us pray. In this time of COVID-19, we pray. When we are, we are aren't sure, God help us to be calm. When information comes from all sides, correct or not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down, God. Help us to reach out with our heart when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distanced. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect Lord, the perfect love casts out all fear. For the doctors, we pray. For the nurses, we pray. For the technicians and the janitors and the aides and the caregivers, we pray. For the researchers and theorists, the epidemiologists, and investigators, for those who are at, are at risk, are, are sick, and those who are grieving, we pray. For all who are affected all around the world, we pray. For safety, for health, for wholeness. May we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, and house those without home. May we work with those who feel they are alone, and may we do all that we can to heal the sick, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the fear. Help us, O oh God, that we might help each other in the love of the Creator, in the name of the Healer, in the life of the Holy Spirit that is in all and with all, we pray. May it be so. Let's gather all our concern into the one prayer that the Lord taught us as we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Their kingdom come. Their will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, as we forgive, forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Our next hymn is number 126 in your Voices United hymn book. Right on, right on, the time is right, which will be presented to you today.
by River Bend United Church Choir and Handbell. So my friends, I want to thank you for participating in this worship. I want to thank my family who helped me at home here. I want to thank all our people who are calling, those who are shut in. I know the session you have been doing a wonderful job. Members of the board, you have been doing a wonderful job. Thank you to Daniel and Guillaume who take this tape and make it work and put it on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful job. And remember, these two shall pass. And the last again is... Uh, one, four, three, my song is love unknown from Voices United.
Now let us receive the blessing. Be strong and good courage. Do not be afraid, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. God will never forsake us. Be strong of good courage. Amen. Friend, this concludes our Palm Passion Sunday service. Stay home, stay safe, and save life. Until we meet again. Amen.